You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's a big world out there, and you're just looking for a pat on the back or head. You run around the city, searching for a place to bark, working your tail off with your nose to the ground, sniffing for a few scraps, hoping someone will throw you a bone. You take each lead, collar after collar, hoping one day to take a bite out of success and become the top dog. Fortunately, you come home each day to open arms, open cans, a drink waiting for you, and a comfortable place in front of the TV set. You know you've got it good, really good, because after all, it's a doggy dog world out there. Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with your host, pet expert, and award-winning author, Liz Palaika, and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm your host, Liz Palaika, and with me today are my good friends, Petra Burke. Hello. And Kate Abbott. Howdy. From Kindred Spirits Canine Education Center in Vista, California. Today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. We're going to talk about dogs and other critters, other pet critters, not the wild rabbit out in the backyard that your dog wants to chase and Bashir occasionally catches, but other animals that share our lives. Dogs are predators, plain and simple. And although many of them are far removed from wild predators, many breeds of dogs and mixtures of dogs still retain a lot of those instincts. And how do we tell a dog that the pet rat in the cage is not the same as the wild rat that's trying to chew your wiring in the garage? So we'll talk about that, how we can keep a peaceable kingdom between all of our pets. But hold on a second, listen to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Sit. Stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Pick up something unique at a Bone to Pick dog boutique. A Bone to Pick has cool hip fashions for big and small dogs that will have their tails wagging in style. Cat products too. A-B-O-N-E dash T-O dash P-I-C-K dot com. Check out our eco-friendly pet products and gifts for humans too. A-B-O-N-E dash T-O dash P-I-C-K dot com. Get your pet's mouth watering monthly with our gourmet treat of the month club and join a Bone to Pick's free birthday club for your puppy. A-B-O-N-E dash T-O dash P-I-C-K dot com. Pick up something special for your best friend at a Bone to Pick. A-B-O-N-E dash T-O dash P-I-C-K dot com. Get 10% off with coupon code PETLIFE. Hey, all you dog stylists. Are you on the cutting edge of canine design and shaggy chic? Groomer Has It on Animal Planet is now casting for season two. Groomer Has It is looking for competitive dog stylists with amazing personalities to compete to become Animal Planet's top groomer. $50,000 grand prize for the winner, plus weekly compensation for all contestants during filming. If you have what it takes to be the top groomer, then audition for Groomer Has It today. For more information, contact Catherine at 310-727-3337, extension 71272, or email Groomer Has has it at gmail.com. Want to know what cats like to eat for breakfast? Mice Krispies, of course. Learn everything there is to know about cats on Catitude with your host, Tom Doc. Each week, we'll spotlight a cool cat breed, give up-to-date advice on cat health, and check out spiffy new cat products. So curl up on the couch every week for a perfectly enjoyable time on Catitude. Catitude, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're begging for more. So back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika, and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm Liz with Petra and Kate, and today we're going to talk about dogs and other pet critters, how to keep this a peaceable kingdom. Now, I know my dogs have lived with rodent pets, and so have yours, Petra. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pet rat. 
We've well, we've mice. had we've had mice right. and rats, yeah. and and Paul and I at previous times have had hamsters. We had a vole one time, but he Why? was he was he was he was he was, he was it, not a, a mole. A no, vole. I know I heard. Well, he I was he was inadvertent. He showed up in a box that we unpacked, and we kept him as a pet. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> well, right. well, and we didn't know what he was and at how first. Long? Well, he lived about a year and a half. My goodness. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what to tell you. Things I never knew. <laughs> <laughs> but we Alex, had... I'll take things I never knew for 500. <laughs> 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 but we've had pet mice, and Paul and I have raised mice for color combinations. We raised brindle mice. We did that for a while. I remember it was between, <laughs> it was between Liz and I. Kayla got involved. Right. Kayla, we'd give her the little mice that could right. eat on their own, baby mice, and right. she'd hand tame them. How many oh, times yeah. have we taken a few with us on our camping trips? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had uh, we had a <laughs> pair of baby mice go to Big Sur. Uh-huh. I'm not sure we gave permission for it. Didn't she sneak them into the van? I, probably. Yeah. These are the ones you just gave her, and she wanted to work right. on getting them hand tamed. Right. I think we were... But she did. Oh, yeah. we even got... To our destination. Yeah. 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 Tamed. <laughs> she, the kids got the touch. So then we all had fun. We were raising mice for a variety of reasons, and we just wanted to see how about the color combination. So what if you mix a brindle with a white or a black? Sure. We had fun. Yeah. Now, knowing how Liz likes to train, did you use, what, little dental floss to make leashes and get them all to heal? <laughs> no. And, no. No. It no. was, I was happy if they wouldn't bite me. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. All right. But anyway, we had some cool raising, colors. raising rodents with dogs who think that mm. mice and rats who invade the garage or the shed or the training yard are a free meal can yes, be tough. Let me interrupt right here just to give a public thanks to Liz for teaching my dog, Walter, that chasing and eating mice are a fun thing to do. Okay, but go ahead. Actually, I think Bashir had more to do than that. <laughs> Uh, I think there was a lot of get it, get it, get it, get it from you that really got him going. Okay, Bashir, I showed him the actual technique. Yes, I will grant yes. you that you did, I, you yourself did not throw the mouse in the air and catch it. Right, right. But Bashir helped with that. <laughs> Certainly verbally encouraged it. And we're delighted. To, oh, look, I saw the tail going down his mouth. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Liz. You're welcome. Yeah, okay. If you have field mice, invade your house, you won't have a problem. <laughs> But It'll going never back, happen now. He's always on. Control. Going back to the pet rodents. <laughs> pet rodents, right? We use leave it a lot. <laughs> when you teach the dog that leave it means ignore whatever you're paying attention to at that moment, the dog can learn that the pet rodents are off limits. Mm -hmm. And Paul and I started that many many years ago with our German shepherds. We had a pair of rats named Weed and Flower. Weed was the boy. Flower was the girl. And must have been in the 60s. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I'm not that old. It was in the 70s. <laughs> not that old. It was in the 70s. <laughs> but we taught the rats that they could run along the back of the couch when they were out of their cage, but they weren't allowed to get off the couch. Okay. We taught the dogs that they had to ignore the rats when they were on the back of the couch. If the rats went to the floor, it was free game. Ah, so you had a secondary reinforcer for right. your rats. <laughs> right. And the rats only tried it once or twice and met a dog going, err, and they'd go back up to the top. Cool. So it worked both ways. Rats are incredibly smart. The dogs were very smart. I do think at times the rats were smarter than the dogs. <laughs> they learned quicker. They did. Yeah. Rats are, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So the dogs learned that, okay, this space was off limits. The rats were allowed there. And the dogs had to ignore him there. And when the rats were in the cage, the dogs weren't allowed to torment them. So leave it became a very, very good command. Now, we did have problems when we put the hamster in the hamster ball. I've had a few dogs who want to nose the hamster ball. Boing! Boing, 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 boing. And uh, when we lived in a two-story house, the hamster took a few falls down the stairs. One too many. Well, no, he always survived. I think he went limp when he went down. But... Uh, it was pretty rough. So we ended up putting baby gates at the top of the stairs. It's like that old myth. If you're in the elevator and it's falling, if you jump up into the air just before it lands, will you survive? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, the hamster always survived. Uh, he never had any broken limbs, but uh, we did put a baby gate at the top of the stairs just to protect him a little bit. <laughs> I can just see somebody coming in. What's that? Oh, yeah, that, that's for the dog and the hamster. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They play together. You know what? If they come to our house, they just don't ask. That's true. <laughs> okay. Now, dogs and ferrets. That's an interesting combination. Well, yeah, but, you know, I'm trying to think all the ferrets I've had over years. Dogs have been fine. They're just so clowns. Ferrets are clowns. And everybody has oh, yeah. ever had them. You've had them. Oh, yeah. They are just... Bounce, bounce, bounce. Hot, pop, pop. Chee, 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 chee. <laughs> so, again, leave it comes in definitely handy. And I do introduce them first one dog at a time and teach it to leave it. But uh, little dogs, uh, like ferrets and cats and ferrets and little dogs, actually have a lot of fun. You, you know, introduce them correctly. Um, not to chase, not to hit that, you know, get that chase instinct going or that uh, prey drive. <laughs> I, I think the only time we really had problems is we've had a couple ferrets, usually the male ferrets, that got a little too nippy. And if they'd bite the dogs, you know, dash up behind them and bite a back leg. I had a few dogs take offense at that. The dogs usually just growled and air snapped. I don't, we never had anybody make contact. But it got a little close sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I don't know. We have fun. We, I mean, Kayla even walks them around on a leash, and so again, just don't throw them in a room and hope it all works out. Oh, you know? yeah, definitely. It's like put your ferret on a leash, put your dog on a leash, introduce them carefully. Well, that that brings it. up a good point. How would you teach the the dog not to chase? The leash you must have control. If you don't okay. have verbal control in in a case with a high prey drive like Walter. I would still have a leash on him, even if, since I do have good verbal control most of the time. <laughs> and, and just reinforce, you cannot chase that critter in the house or when I'm telling you no, or this particular critter is off limits to be chased at any time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Use the leash to reinforce it. And I would say be really cautious with rescue dogs. If you don't know, like we all know our dogs. We've raised them since, since puppies. We've been, they've been exposed to so many different animals but i'd be real cautious with with a new unknown new, dog yep yep exactly or if you add a new little critter pet <clears throat> to the household mm -hmm. be careful yeah it can work i mean geez liz and my dogs and they've all lived a variety i mean we even have chickens now sure and i knew when we first got the chickens um uh logan thought it was just the coolest thing to go chase them and Keely, for a while, thought it was like bowling pins. You run into the flock, and they go, wee! And they spread everywhere, and she stands there going, wow, that was fun. Okay, now, folks, in, in, if you haven't listened to past podcasts, Keely's the Pomeranian, who we nicknamed the Wolverine. So she never went after a chase. She thought it was neat to run into them, and they all fly away, and then they all look at her like, yeah, yeah we're but bigger than you. Then they're not going to lay f <laughs> eggs for the next two weeks. No, Logan was the one I'd worry about, because him being Aussie could easily grab a chicken. So when we taught Logan with the chickens, I actually had him on leash. You can't put a leash on a chicken. We have 25 Well, you probably could, but... <laughs> Maybe a little interesting. We put one on a duck. Well, we tried. We, we did. We did. But then we did is we actually used that herd instinct with Logan and actually taught him to go around them and keep them together, and that made him happy. And so now when the chickens are out, we'll bring him out, and he just keeps the flock together. I mean, chickens aren't like good herding type birds but it's enough that he can keep them gathered together and so that makes him happy he works something well let's go on to another little critter rabbits now i've had rabbits in the past before i discovered that they made me sneeze but you and kayla have rabbits yeah we have three and again you can put those on leashes <laughs> i love the leash we have such a variety of them at our house <laughs> such a variety of animals <laughs> but again to leave it, introduce them to it, and they actually, our dogs now, especially the German Shepherd, you think he, you know, his mouth is so big he could probably swallow one, but he's a, like a daddy. He licks them and cleans them, and I'm sure the rabbits are like, gross, this is nasty. Well, we found that with a lot of ours, too, the, the, uh... That motherly the, instinct seems to yeah, kick in. Yeah, the dogs love to lick those big ears. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, the rabbit candy from the other end. But uh, yeah. that's got dogs. And it's been nice because there have been times when we don't latch the cages correctly and we've actually found two of them roaming around in the, the dog yard. 
The dogs are sound asleep. Rabbits are hopping around them, and they're not even <laughs> moving. They kind of look like, oh, yeah, it's you again. Okay. You know, and it's interesting because they won't mess with our rabbits. They don't get up to chase them. They lick them, if anything, or just say, hey, you know what? There's a rabbit out. But you let them out in the rest of the property, and there's those wild rabbits. It's like, free game, and they go and chase them off the property, which is fine with me because they go crazy. But the wild rabbits, they'll chase them away. But again... Let's be careful in the beginning. Exactly. Dogs on leash exactly. because dogs are predators and rabbits are the ultimate prey. Mm-hmm. And rabbits, if scared too much, can just can keel die. over and die. Yeah, they can. Uh, they also get stressed very easily and they can get overheated very easily. So the dogs just simply cannot chase the rabbits. No. This is a good time of introducing them both on leash. Take it slow. Take it very slow. Keep mm-hmm. the rabbit safely caged, secured. Now, we've also had incidences of dogs tearing up rabbit hutches. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, uh, uh, my your brother's, brother's dog. Got into my sister's rabbit cage, tore that hutch to pieces, and unfortunately killed her rabbit mm-hmm. that she had had for many years. So it can be a disaster. You've got to be very, very careful. We uh, were members of a therapy dog group, and on one of our visits, one of our new members brought in a rabbit. Oh, he's so cute, too. Great rabbit. Oh, he's tiny and white and adorable. Very, very (laughs) cool and calm. But we had to uh, introduce all of the therapy dogs on that visit one at a time, make sure they were safe around the rabbit before we went into the nursing home you know we didn't want to go tearing up and down the halls chasing rabbit and dog chasing oh definitely um and i was very pleased with my boy because i have seen him chase the wild rabbits but when told to be gentle that this was a friend he just sniffed all over great big deep breaths clean sprouts (laughs) ears and then was quite pleased and went on it was done yeah Bashir made the rabbit positively disgusted, <laughs> slobbered his ears, tried to suck his brains out by inhaling his ears, <laughs> washed his face, and finally the rabbit started kicking. Okay, that's enough. enough. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a break. When we get back, we'll talk about some different critters, some reptiles, and some bigger pets that we share our homes with. So take a listen to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Sit. Stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Greetings, human. What planet am I on? Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in Paparazzi, Candid Pictures of You and Your Pet. For up-to-date pet-friendly events, activities, and pet-related services and products, Pet Planet Magazine is your final destination. I shall take this magazine home with me. Back to your home planet? No, to my condo in Boca. Pet Planet Magazine. Check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578. It's out of this world. world. If you love your pet, you won't want to miss the Louisville Pet Lovers Expo, September 27th and 28th at the Kentucky Expo Center. Check out the latest in pet products and services from over 100 exhibitors. Meet adoptable pets from local shelters and rescue groups, demonstrations, and a pet fashion show. Plus, you can enter your pet into lots of fun contests with great prizes. It's all at the Louisville Pet Lovers Expo, September 27th and 28th at the Kentucky Expo Center. Go to LouisvillePetExpo.com for more. Thinking about buying a monkey? How about a ferret or a skunk? Then check out the show that will answer the burning questions, where do you get them? What do you feed them? How do you take care of them? And most of all, what were you thinking? With exotic pet expert and author Bob Tart, every week on demand from PetLifeRadio.com.
Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're begging for more. So back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm your host, Liz Palaika, with my friends Petra Burke and Kate Abbott. And today we're talking about dogs and other pet animals, other pets from rodents, rats and mice and hamsters, all the way through horses, and how to keep it a peaceable kingdom. Mainly how to keep the dog from chasing (laughs) and thinking that our other pets are prey animals, which in nature they are, and how to keep everybody safe, the dog safe and the other animals safe. Before we go on to reptiles and and horses, though, let's talk about cats. Most common buddy or other animal in the household. We We all have them. We all have them, and we hear it from our training students on a regular basis. How do we stop the dog from chasing the cats? The cats were here first. It's not fair. We love this puppy, but if it keeps chasing the cats, it'll have to go. Yep. And the next best friend is your leash. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And I love that look that so many people get. The leash is not just for a walk, I say to them. It's to yeah. teach and control your dog even in the house. And it's like, oh, what a concept. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> or when they use it, it worked. Yeah. Exactly. Rather yeah. than just screaming and yelling after, you know, running after your dog. The thing that I teach uh, our dogs is that the cats are the supreme beings. I mean, cats think they are anyway, so might as well let them be that way. But when the cats can do anything they want, and the dogs have to respect that and not chase, it takes all the uncertainty out of the equation. The dog learns, hey, this cat can take a bite of my food. This cat can rub herself under my chin. This cat can sharpen her claws on my paw. (laughs) (laughs) And the cat can go dashing back and forth up and down the hallway. And I, the dog, can't do anything. Unless you're Walter. It's a little unfair, granted, but it takes away all the uncertainty, and there's a very thick line drawn in the sand, and the dogs know it. Actually, my cat um, encourages Walter to chase him, and they have a great time playing chase up and down the hallway. Now, once cat is caught, everybody stops. Nothing happens. Uh, Maybe cat might get ears cleaned. But other than that, it's a great game, but only the cat can initiate it. Right. Well, in our house, too. I mean, with Keely, the palm, and and we've got two kittens that are, well, shoot, what are they, four months old now, in addition to one other house cat. One of our house cats is just obviously the supreme being because she's just, well, you may walk past me, but don't breathe my way, don't even look my way. So she kind of rules the dogs. (laughs) But with the kittens, first, they were afraid of them. So, of sure. course, when they're hissing and that, that gets the dogs going. But, again, it was, it's simple because our dogs do know to leave it. If we have to and needed to, we could use put the leash on them. But now with the kittens a little bit bigger, Keely and the kittens actually do the same thing. They play the, the chase thing. And usually it's Keely, you know, little dogs with that <laughs> late in the evening thing. And she's so little. So she does circles around the house and down the hallway and stuff. So the cats wait. And then when they go, they pounce on her. Or one might be chasing her around. So you have a dog and then you have two kittens chasing her around. <laughs> but the cats are chasing the dog, uh-huh. which is not the other way around. <laughs> and then if Keely does try to does see them and tries to chase them, they jump up high. Keely passes them and you see them go, bop! Kind of like, hey, knucklehead, I'm up here. <laughs> so the game could be once they establish a good relationship. Is it? But I would put reservations on that. That little dogs... Or dogs and cats about the same size, but not terriers. No, not no, most no, terriers. No. And I would really, really limit that game with the bigger dogs because the prey drive can just kick in so strong. Exactly. I mean, our three big guys will be in the house, and the game will go on, but the other three hold down stays, and yeah. they don't. They don't go. But again, training all this. Oh yeah, helps yep. with all all of it. Yep. And then uh, we talked at the beginning of this podcast about the leave it, and that works with the cat food. And the cat litter box, leaving that <laughs> oh, good yeah. stuff away, uh, alone. Initially, I would put it away where the dog can't reach it. And you again, the dog on a leash, leave it. And, uh, and do that repeatedly. <laughs> and repeatedly. And repeatedly. 
Although I have to say, Archer was real good about that. He only needed a couple leave-its, and he has not touched the cat food or the cat box. Knock on wood. <laughs> yep. Well, I like what you did. I always get the hooded one. Uh huh. You know, but I know you at your house. You put actually I've got an extra bathroom. Ba- well, yeah, and you can put the litter box. You just have that what a, 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 a motor pan. A motor pan. But she put a baby gate, that wood one, where you took a rail out. So the cats can fit through. And, and the, the dogs, dogs couldn't. Can't. Ah. That was great. So they had the whole bathroom. Dogs couldn't get in there, but cats go in and out with no problem. Right. That Not everybody's nice. got an extra bathroom, but yeah. <laughs> but if you do, it works well. <laughs> yeah. That's what one of my clients had done. They had put a, a latch to hold the door open. Just enough so that the cat could go shrimp yep, in I've there. Yep, I've seen that too. Sure. Exactly. Because yeah. they had just adopted mm-hmm. a year old shepherd and they wanted to be sure the cat had an escape. The three cats had escape routes. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Some weird pets. Reptiles. Now, I've got turtles and tortoises in my backyard and of various sizes. In That's the... why he's known as moving rocks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Walking rocks. <laughs> and all of my dogs have. Uh, grown up with them they know they're not to touch them and if a tortoise runs into them and basically shoves a a dog who's laying down move the dogs just get up and move but that said patron i do reptile rescue and we've taken in turtles and tortoises that have been chewed on by dogs oh my gosh way too many times yeah legs chewed shells chewed dogs that think the uh turtle or tortoise is a chew toy a moving chew toy. Again, with reptiles, whether it be lizards, snakes, turtles, tortoises, prevention is the key here. These guys are not to play together. Mm-mm. And they're not going to play together. And I think the the reptile needs to be caged securely away from the dog, and the dog needs to learn to leave them alone. Exactly. I agree. Yeah, safest way. Yeah, there's just no way they're going to get along. Nope. And uh, the prey drive is just too strong. So how about uh, birds? You've got birds at home, Petra. I don't have birds because the darn things make me sneeze. <laughs> we have parakeets. Uh, probably the biggest challenge is really not the dogs. <laughs> it's the cats. <laughs> cats and birds. Cats and birds. And cats, and cats aren't nearly as trainable as dogs no, are. No, they're not. They're not. Squirt bottle works, works great there. Water bottle. <laughs> now, I did lose when Paul and I were still, because my husband loves birds, when we were still trying to find a species of bird that we could keep that wouldn't make me sneeze, we had a cockatiel. Oh, I remember that. Remember what yeah. happened to her? Yeah, I remember that, too. <laughs> yeah. I had let that was the, before my time. So yeah, it was. Me. I had let the cockatiel out of yeah. her cage. I had put the dogs outside <laughs> and the cats back in the bedroom. And I had let the cockatiel out of her cage for some exercise to fly around. And the TV repair guy came to work on the TV. So I let him in. Well, when he left, I forgot that the bird was still out. And I let the dogs in. And Ursa, my good Ursa, one of my Australian shepherds, took one look at bird, made a leap. Bird tried to get into the air. Bird and dog met. Bird disappeared. Yeah. There was not one feather fluttering. Not even enough time for me to say, leave it. No, I just watched in horror. And then the next day, there was lots of feathers in the backyard. Oh, poor That was bird. our last bird. We have parakeets. We just keep them in a nice big size cage <laughs> and don't even try to introduce them. Because they fly so quickly. They move so fast. Oh, yeah. Now, I know people have parrots. I know. The bigger birds, the I bigger think, are birds. Easy. Yeah, easy. exactly. I mean, you can have Actually, a stand for them. You can and the bigger friends with parrots, they were more worried about the bird injuring the dog. Yeah, that was, that was my next comment. Was yeah, the big heard birds. It. Think yeah. birds can take a chunk out of yeah. the dog. It's more training the bird to leave the dog alone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I used yeah. to help a woman rehabilitate parrots or uh, that had been abused. And we would have very, very thick, very thick <laughs> gloves. Gloves on. Yes. I could still feel the pressure. Oh yeah. Oh, they could have easily taken off a finger if we'd yeah. gone in there barehanded. Um, so the dogs, they, there was a, a lot of uh, impetus for us to teach the dogs to leave the parrots alone. Totally well, I, alone. Yes. I had a dork parrot, so um, wasn't much of a flyer, especially because I kept his wings clipped. But uh, the dogs quickly learned to ignore him too because he had such a uh, strong beak. I can still remember watching my little dwarf parrot uh, 
climb off of his perch down the side of the couch, march across the room, while all of the other animals just cleared the way. Here comes the god. Back off, everybody. <laughs> and part of that was the bird's attitude and judicious use of his beak, and part of it was me backing him up as well. <laughs> Yeah, and he would just march across to it's his other the safest. Mm-hmm. Just, just a, I mean, when we were a kid, I remember we had a parakeet that never learned to fly, and she would sit on the top of our lab's head. But our lab was mellow and learned to leave the bird alone, and they had a good little friendship. And the bird would just climb up and stand. And they'd just sit there and you kind of perch on the top oh, of the head, and they were fine. That's right. But, One of so my they're... friends had a Chesapeake retired drug detection dog. They had two uh, cockatiels. And the cockatiels would get out, or they would let them out of the cage. They would go to the Chesapeake and pull his fur and take it back to their cage nest. and nest. make a nest out of oh, it. Funny. And he was so good and patient about it. Uh-huh. So they, there are relationships that out there that can That dog walked into happen. the room. The, the, the cockatiels would throw themselves at their cage bars going, Oh, they let me out of me so good. And, and that goes with all of these little pets. We're not saying that they can't have a relationship. I mean, saying, you hear about the weirdest careful. ones, a dog yeah. and, and a grizzly bear, or a dog and a lion. I mean, they're... Or is a cat the, who, mama cat who nursed the squirrel. Yeah, <laughs> there are un- unusual ones yeah, out there. Yeah, but in the beginning, let's take care, let's be careful. Exactly. All right, before we close for, for this show, Petra, it's all yours, horses. <laughs> None of us have horses in our backyard. You do. Or goats or sheep. Yeah. Well, the horses and the goats, I'd say it it was the same way. When we had the dogs first, then the goat came, and then the horses came. And again, it was... It sounded like they showed up with a bag over their shoulder. You got (laughs) horses. You got goats. Okay. Okay, yeah. (laughs) But we introduced... with My daughter and I would take each dog, and one at a time, and on leash, and and walk them up. And it wasn't like, you know, going into the corral and say, okay, here, introduce each other. It'd be on the outside and bring the horse over and give it carrots and love on it. Dog would have to sit there. We did a sit stay. So they got to know to smell each other. Um, so we slowly introduced them to, that way. We, every time we went in the corral, luckily the horses don't hate dogs. Some do. Mm. So then at that point, they're much bigger. Oh, uh, yeah. The dogs learned how to stay on the outside. But our guys don't mind the dogs at all. And so um, when we'd go in, the dog would still be on leash. And Kayla and I would go in together. And so she, you know, she, whether one of us would watch the horse, the other one would watch the dog and learn just to walk by and to ignore it. Now, all four will be out there in the pasture with us, with us, with the horses, or with the goat. And I think the one thing, the goat, though, was raised with a dog, so it thinks it's a dog. Yeah, she does. She, <laughs> she came to baby That's puppy class, different. and she did the agility course, and she pulls the dog wagon. So, yes, <laughs> yeah. Tika, Tika thinks she's a dog. Yeah, and they, I think she, when we got her, because she was such a baby... She they, imprinted on the dogs. Yeah, and the dogs took her, actually the dogs took her in as a puppy because they cleaned her all the time. She <laughs> just had funny feet, you know? That was they, it. they went clank, clank, clank and stuff. That was it, yeah. <laughs> but again, the whole idea is those on leash, introduce them slowly, especially to horses because they're big and they can hurt anybody quickly. That's and then find cool. out, you know, you're purchasing or rescuing a horse. Can Do they even like them? dogs has has the horse been socialized to dogs yeah exactly luckily to our dogs <laughs> right exactly exactly and ours did and everything works out and now everybody is comfortable with each other and we don't have any have any issues so and they know to stay away we kind of taught them to keep away from the hooves or anything even if they walk we don't want them stepped on you know. and the teeth yeah yeah but none <laughs> of ours luckily don't try to bite anybody uh, which is nice I've, uh, it's like my, ah no bite <laughs> one of my cousin's horses <laughs> was very good about hurting the hurting dogs hurting the hurting dogs. Yes. and so, when a big horse is chasing a dog the dog moves <laughs> yeah very quickly out of the way so i guess overall i mean with my we've got the rabbits the chickens the birds the ferret the horses the you know whatever i have in my backyard at this time well no, even, i know Christmas is coming. She needs a vole. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> there You're she goes. funny. No. No, no vole. No but that with training, with patience, um, our whole family works great. There's no issues whatsoever. It's a peaceable kingdom. Yes, peaceable animal kingdom. And our dogs are out with us all the time, taking care of all these animals outside. So, no problem. So it can work. Just patience. And on that note... We'll wrap up this podcast. Thanks for listening to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm Liz. I'm Petra. Bye-bye. And we'll see you on our next show. Having a rough day? 
Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> 